second half of this video deals with stream transport. And streams, while they're eroding, they're carrying sediment. And the sediment that they carry is really determined by their speed. And they'll deposit those sediments based on size and shape, as we've been talking about. Now, the sediments that are being carried are not traveling at the same speed as the water. They're actually traveling slower. And there's a lot of different ways that they're traveling. You can see it in this animation. Some are rolling, some are sliding, some are dissolved and suspended um, in the flow of water. But none of them are traveling at the same speed. So that really will affect how they get deposited. Here's an actual stream and some of the sediments inside of it and how they're moving. You can get an idea in real time what that looks like. So fast moving water, uh, the turbidity is picking up certain sediments and pushing them, rolling them, sliding them across the um, stream bed. The bigger they are, you can see some big ones, they're not being moved. Ones that are being able to be carried, they, they do get moved. So how does that happen? What, what's the physical force? Now, we already talked about that. The greater the velocity of a stream, the larger the sediment particles it can carry. When a stream slows down, the larger size sediments are going to be deposited first. And, and the graph on page 6 in your Earth Science Reference Tables will demonstrate that. So we're just going to go into a little bit of detail on how to use that chart. It is a little confusing. Um, you have to be good with math to understand the... Um, way that the intervals are kind of put together on the x and y axis they're not evenly spaced which is uh, odd and hard to understand but um just like a number line you have to be able to count and you know reference um each individual um set speed for the uh, stream velocity or the particle diameter so we already did this but you know, boulders, cobbles, pebbles, sand, silt, clay. Those are the six sediments shown on this chart. The diameter of a boulder is between 25.6 centimeters or greater. And then cobbles are between 25.5 and 6.4 and so on and so forth. Let's look at an example of a question that can be asked using this chart from our reference table. What is the minimum stream velocity needed to carry the smallest boulder? Now, the smallest boulder is going to be um, nothing less than 25.6 centimeters. So we know that that's the cutoff. How do we figure out this, the speed needed to carry a 25.6 centimeter boulder? Well, that black line is there to help us. That black line is representing the speed needed to carry each individual um, sediment type. And wherever the black line meets a dotted line, horizontal dotted line, that's the speed for that particular sediment. So in this case, where the black line crosses the dotted line is somewhere over here. So take a moment and see if you can calculate the speed needed. You should have calculated 200 centimeters per second as your speed required. Let's move on to the smallest sand grain. So smallest sand grain is 0 0.006 right there. What's the speed needed? We're looking at the place where the black line crosses the dotted line that I just highlighted, somewhere over here. Now, if you put down 0.3, you'd be correct. If you put down 0.4, you'd be correct. So that's why I put 0.35 centimeters per second. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, we have a stream with a velocity of 100 centimeters per second. I used a dotted yellow line to point that out. What size particles will it be able to transport? List them all. So we know that we have a speed of 100 centimeters per second. What are the particles, what are the sediments being carried at that speed? Take a moment to answer that question. So if the stream is moving at 100 centimeters per second, it's carrying pebbles, sand. So if a stream is moving, so if a stream is moving at 100 centimeters per second, it's carrying pebbles, sand, silt, and clay. The reason why is because that 100 centimeter cutoff 
happens somewhere in the middle of pebbles. Okay, so boulders and cobbles would not be carried at that speed. Take a look at another example. This one is asking about the minimum stream velocity needed to carry the following sediments. So we have three sediment types and we want to know what's the slowest possible speed necessary to carry them. So we'll start with sand. Sand is in that range. And I drew that red dotted line to help you distinguish where that cutoff is. So take a moment to calculate that. That should be 0.3 centimeters per second. Now for pebbles, what's the minimum stream velocity needed to carry pebbles? Take a moment to calculate that. That would be 10 centimeters per second. And then clay, the smallest possible particle, has to be smaller than 0 0.0004. This one was a little more difficult because of where that um, line really is. It's somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02, so I thought it would be appropriate to have 0 0.015. All right, our last example. We have a stream that's flowing at 100 centimeters per second, and it slows down to 5 centimeters per second. Which particle will settle first. So a very real situation, a stream slows down, what's getting dropped off first? So it's already traveling at 100 centimeters per second. If it gets down to 5 centimeters per second, what's a particle that can't be carried at 5 centimeters per second anymore? The answer is pebbles. So that's it for now. And thanks for watching.